Hi friends, Andrew Goodall from Nature's Image Photography here once again with another In My Photography School series of videos. This is the series where I break down the essential skills of photography into bite-sized pieces that are easy to understand. This one is all about tripods and when to use them. But before we start, I would love it if you could click that subscribe button if you haven't already to keep up with new videos in the series as they come online. So my last video in the series was about shutter speed and in it I touched on how shutter speed affects how we capture moving subjects in a photo. In that video I mostly talked about using a fast shutter speed to eliminate movement, but I also mentioned that when you use a slow shutter speed you might need a tripod to eliminate the blurring caused by a shaky camera. That raises an obvious question. How fast is fast enough to shoot handheld and how slow is slow enough that you need a tripod? So in this video I'm going to take a closer look at when you need your tripod and when you can get by without it. There are a couple of reasons you might decide to use a slow shutter speed. Firstly because the light is low and you simply have no other choice. Secondly because you have made a creative choice to blur your moving subject to create a particular movement effect. But even if you want your moving subject to be blurry you still need the rest of the photo to be sharp and that's where a tripod becomes essential. So, where is the cutoff point between shooting handheld and needing a tripod? Well, before we can answer that, we need to take a little detour and talk about lenses for a moment. Let's start with a wide angle lens. When we shoot wide angle, the camera literally shoots a very wide angle of view of what's in front of you. And with such a wide view, the tiniest bit of camera shake might hardly impact on the shot at all. But when you zoom in on something with a telephoto lens, the angle of view becomes much smaller and the smaller the angle of view becomes, the more that same amount of camera shake will impact on your photo. So the cutoff between handheld and tripod shooting varies depending on what kind of lens you use. The bigger your lens gets, or the more you magnify the subject, the faster your shutter speed needs to be. A common rule of thumb that's easy to remember is that your shutter speed should be equal to or faster than the focal length number of the lens. If that sounds a bit technical, it's easier to see it in practical terms. If you're shooting with a 100mm lens, your shutter speed should be above a hundredth of a second. With a 200mm lens, the shutter speed should be above a two hundredth of a second. 300mm lens, three hundredth of a second, and so on. Now, those numbers indicate the bare minimum. The slowest shutter speed you should consider using handheld for that lens. If you can go faster, naturally you would. So with a 200mm lens, I'm not saying you should shoot at a two hundredth of a second. In fact, if the light is bright and you can shoot at a thousandth of a second, you probably should. But if the light gets low and you start to reach that cutoff point, it's time to consider putting your camera on a tripod. If you can remember that, it should get you by in most situations. But there are a couple of exceptions to keep in mind. First of all, avoid going below a thirtieth of a second, no matter what lens you use. For landscape photography, you might have a lens as wide as 18, 12, 10 millimeters, or even smaller. But that doesn't mean you should apply the rule I just described and shoot at a tenth of a second with a 10 millimeter lens. There is a limit to this and a thirtieth of a second is about it. The second exception is for macro photography. If you're shooting right up close to tiny subjects, your angle of view is going to be tiny as well. Whether your lens is 60, 90 or 110 millimeters, if you're shooting macro handheld, you should aim for a five hundredth or even a thousandth of a second as your minimum and shoot even faster if possible. And finally, never forget that these guidelines are for eliminating camera movement only. If you're shooting sports or any type of action, the shutter speed not only needs to be fast enough to eliminate camera shake, but to freeze movement of the subject itself. Okay, so far so good. I think the rule I've given you is pretty easy to remember. Shutter speed should be faster than the size of the lens. Unfortunately, things do get a little more complicated depending on what sort of camera you use. Strictly speaking, those numbers apply to full frame sensor cameras, which are the big expensive ones the professionals use. But a big chunk of the camera market is in crop sensor cameras where the sensor is smaller, about two thirds the size, or in the case of the micro four thirds cameras, about half the size. Believe it or not, as the sensor gets smaller, the magnification level of your lens gets larger and therefore the issue of camera shake gets even more critical. So if you're using a camera with a smaller sensor, your cutoff point should really be a stop or two faster than what we've talked about so far. Remember, when we talk about these cutoff points, we are talking about the bare minimum before you expect your photos to get blurry. So if you are in any doubt whatsoever, play it safe and use a tripod. 
Now before I end the video, I want to give you two more tips, one for handheld photos and one for tripods. First for handheld, image stabilisation, also known as vibration reduction. This is a clever feature available on most digital cameras designed to reduce the amount of blurring caused by shooting handheld. It's available in most brands and on some the stabiliser is built into the camera body, with other brands it's built into the lens and you may have to pay a little more to get a lens with a built-in stabiliser. The image stabiliser is a great feature and it really does eliminate quite a lot of blurring at slower speeds, but I wouldn't rely on it all the time and I certainly wouldn't consider it a substitute for a tripod. And since our subject of the day is tripods, if you are using a tripod it is important to switch your image stabiliser off. The stabiliser is supposed to undo the blurring caused by a moving camera, but if the camera is not moving, the image stabiliser can actually cause the very blurring it's trying to prevent. My final tip for today is about how to get even better results out of your tripod. We know that using a tripod is a good idea, but even with a tripod we risk bumping the camera every time we press the button. So using a tripod plus some mechanism that lets you take a photo without actually touching the camera is even better. You have a few options here. The one I use most of all is a remote release cable. If your camera has a suitable socket you can plug in one of these and then take your photo without having to touch the camera. These can be bought quite cheap, just make sure you get one that is made to suit your specific camera model. You can also get wireless remotes but they usually cost a bit more. Not all cameras have a socket for a remote release, but pretty much all cameras offer you a two second delay. With this feature you can press the button and the photo is taken two seconds later. That way any vibration caused when you press the button is gone by the time the shutter goes off. Just be sure you take both hands away and don't bump the camera or the tripod over those two seconds. And finally, these days with the most modern DSLR and mirrorless cameras, you can even download an app for your smartphone that lets you operate the camera by remote control. I can't go into detail because I don't use one of these myself, but you can refer to your manual or go online to see if this option is available for your camera. And there you have it, those are my tips for when you can shoot handheld and when you really should be using a tripod. If you're new to photography, I really hope you find this information useful as it will not only help you keep your photos sharp, but help you capture interesting movement effects as well. If you did enjoy the video, don't forget to subscribe before you go. I have more tutorials on the way and I hope one day this playlist will complete a comprehensive course in DSLR photography. For now, I'm Andrew Goodall and this is Nature's Image Photography. Thanks for watching.